You know, um, this week, for the first time, I listened to the Hamilton musical soundtrack, and I was amazed at all the history I was learning through song. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be awesome if I could sing my TED Talk? And I thought, that's a really bad idea, <laughs> because I can't sing. I don't even really consider myself a speaker as much as a writer, but since these are called TED Talks and not TED Types, I'm going to give up my best shot. I would describe myself as just a small-town girl living in a lonely world. <laughs> but since that's borderline plagiarism, I'll just say this about myself. I'm a middle-aged white female, born and raised in a state whose motto is, Idaho's too great to hate. We're still working on it. I hope you are too, Baton Rouge and Minneapolis, Dallas, Orlando, Nice, Munich, and honestly, far too many other cities and countries to comprehend. Even where these talks are being held, the Human Rights Education Institute, it was set up as a memorial so that we wouldn't forget. We ought not to think more highly of ourselves than we do our neighbors. You know, this area was known for its prejudice against blacks. There was even a compound set up to plan terror and attacks. Racist hate was peddled by the Aryan nation, and it must be cut off by the root in our generation. I think we're uncomfortable with our differences. We want everyone to think and act and look just like us. When in actuality, diversity is divine design. We were never meant to be alike. We are collective community, created to complement but not clone. Our individuality is the symphony. We're the song. But I fear we've been out of tune far too long. To think that one of our platforms would trump another, no pun intended, maybe just a little, <laughs> Or to think that we could dodge a bullet because of our name while others lose their lives by the same? Our candidates are yelling until they lose their voice. Do they think whoever wins the screaming match is going to be our choice? It's true. We haven't been given the best selection for this election. But what if it's our moment, me and you, to be the solution for the condition of our nation? We might not have it all together, but together, we have it all. We need each other. In fact, I know it's going to be uncomfortable, but would you take a moment and tell the person next to you, I need you. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves, take a while. Our words have creative power to build up or to tear down. In fact, if we knew our inherent value and worth, there'd be a lot less angry words and a lot more compassion and kindness. You see, anger and hate are born from a seed of insecurity and inadequacy. The war begins in each of us, and the battle will be won there as well. Our picture won't be perfect until the last puzzle piece is in place. You're the missing piece. So while John Mayer's waiting for the world to change, I'm looking at the woman in the mirror. I'm asking her to make the change. Will you do the same? We can have differences and dialogue and discourse without disunity, but we must be secure in our own identity. You know, I'm a pastor by vocation, and so that's presented for me a lot of challenges, prejudice, and gender bias. And I wrote something to keep myself encouraged so that I wouldn't give up and I'd keep pressing in. And I think I'll leave you with that today. There's only one you. You're going to have to fight to be it. Like wearing a size too small, it's going to be a terrible fit. People are going to push you in a corner and tell you what you can do. They don't understand the amazing plans that God has for you. 
We're tempted by competition, drowning in the pressure vat. You know the devil tried that in the desert? Jesus was having none of that. The danger of comparison is it takes away from our true worth. Look, if God had wanted you to be someone else, he would have taken care of it at birth. We measure ourselves by human standards. It's all about image and size. We've drank the juice of popularity, and it's all just a pack of lies. The scheme of the enemy is to make us an imitation. Formed in the matrix of our mother, we're already his perfect creation. God's calling you to dig deep in the wells of who you are. In the galaxy of his universe, you're his shining star. What if this generation had merely copied what the last had done? It was by innovation and advancement that the West was won. God doesn't make seconds. You're his first, and you're his best. There's no track housing here. You stand out from all the rest. Listen, it's not about what you can do. It's all about the light that's in you. It's his hope, his glory. You're just the book that tells his story. Like the Blues Brothers said, I've got a message from God for you. He's commissioning you to be yourself. It's exactly what you should do. So here it is. The enormity of conformity is the gravity that you might miss your destiny. There's only one you. Be it. Thank you.